Good evening and thank you so much, Megan, for having me here this evening, along with my colleagues at the Jewish Federation. So I'm going to talk about safety and security and some of the topics I'll bring up are, are unpleasant. I just want to warn you. Um, I always like to, to share that, but it's so important. It's such an important piece of this discussion. So I'm going to start with this and I'm not asking for live responses, but what does seeing this flag hanging evoke in you? What are the emotions, the thoughts? And I know it's a very personal question. So again, I'm not asking for responses, but I can probably share some thoughts. And these are thoughts that people I have been working with have shared with me. So certainly discomfort, something unsettling, worried, concerned. Am I safe? Am I secure? Am I secure in my own neighborhood, my own community? My counterparts tonight are going to talk about contemporary anti-Semitism, its meaning, and the trauma brought on by hate symbols such as this Nazi flag, and the importance of resiliency. My role tonight is to talk about security and safety, and there is nothing more important. It is a basic need for all of us, and it's a team effort. And like Megan said, safety is vital for all of us. It's not just for individuals. It is collective, a collective effort. And I can't thank you all enough for joining us here tonight. This is a great example of a team effort. So I'll back up just a bit and talk about my role at the Jewish Federation. I am the Director of Community Security for the Jewish Federation of Greater Pittsburgh, which is a very long title. But um, in much briefer terms, I'm responsible for overseeing the safety and security of our 50 plus Jewish organizations. So that could be our synagogues, our community centers, our day schools, our businesses. And I've been in this role for two years. I uh, spent 24 years as an FBI agent. My last six years were spent at the Pittsburgh FBI office. And uh, I was, before I retired from the FBI, I spent some time as what is called the civil rights supervisor for the Pittsburgh FBI office. And our squad focused on hate crimes to include the 2018 attack on the Tree of Life building. Our squad ran and oversaw that case, and we have seen firsthand what hate can do to a community. We've worked so hard to rebuild in our community since that attack, making our building safer, physically safer spaces, making our members feel safer through awareness through training, through active threat briefings. And we've worked so closely with our 1027 healing partnership to build resiliency. And I know you'll hear from Maggie Feinstein, the director of the 1027 healing partnership uh, after I speak and Laura Turner from the Federation speaks. So I'm going to share with you some visuals on what a community threat briefing looks like for Jewish Pittsburgh. These are briefings I do typically once a month to the Jewish community. And why is this so important? It, because it brings an awareness to the issue at hand tonight and to the very realistic threat tempo that exists in our community. That's a term a lot we use in security. What's the threat tempo like? Is it high? Is it elevated? Is it moderate? Um, and unfortunately, the word we use in the Jewish community is it's an elevated threat tempo. And so that reiterates the need for constant situational awareness, and it, re it reinforces that security is paramount. We have to look out for one another. We have to be engaged in our own safety and security. So I'm going to share a few images in, in, uh, in a minute, and I'll explain what the images are. But these images are what hate looks like, hatred towards the Jewish community. And this is larger than a Nazi flag. And none of the comments I'm going to make are related, are specific to the, the flag in Netna. I'm going to be speaking in generalities based on what we have seen in Pittsburgh and throughout the country. So a large part of my role is working with law enforcement and our fusion centers to monitor intelligence, uh, to monitor these threats, to monitor what we're seeing. And some of that I will share here with you tonight. And I just wanna put this in context before I share these images. So, Jews make up about 2% of the US population, yet Jews are the most hated of all religions. And I'm basing that statement on the FBI's annual hate crimes report. 
each year it publishes hate crime statistics and it looks at all bias crimes. But when you look at the hatred towards religious groups, and there's approximately 14 groups that are included in that, threats directed against the Jewish community are 60% of the religious hate and the religious bias. In a much broader context, if we look at all of hate crimes in the country, the top three targeted groups are Blacks, followed by the LGBTQ community, followed by Jews. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective about some of the things we see from a security lens. So if you bear with me for one minute, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Okay, so like I said, I have a few images that I wanted to share. On the left is a flyer that we have had members of the Jewish community thrown on their lawn attached to either a sack of rice or a sack of bird seed. And it is singularly blaming Jews for COVID. And I won't go through the whole flyer, but you can see that the uh, that there is a direct blame placed on the Jews for COVID. And that is one thing that has certainly caused an uptick in the anti-Semitism that we have seen in the past two years now. The picture to the right are flyers that we have seen in our community. We've seen them in other communities. Um, these are what we typically call the neo-Nazi or white supremacy symbols. And if you look at the one in the middle that says Rahoa, that stands for a racial holy war. The white supremacists are calling for an ethnic cleansing. They're calling for a, a white supremacy. And so these are flyers that are posted again in Jewish neighborhoods. Um, if you look to the right, this is an online post. And this post is commending the work of the assailant who attacked the Tree of Life building. And um, and I'll just read what it says on there, that the assailant gave those kikes a long overdue lead shower. And he is, and I don't use his name, but the assailant is referred to as a saint. And this is what is spread on white supremacy channels. And if you can see the bottom, hail the saints. The saints is a group of people who engage in, um, in hate crimes, whether it's anti-Semitic, or whatever the case may be. So just something that is out there in um, you, on, on the internet, whether it's on uh, the clear net or the dark net. Right below that photo is a windshield that was smashed. This is from a residence in the Jewish community that had her car specifically smashed. And if you go to the right, this is a uh, swastika that was spray painted on the home. This is uh, what happened here, right here in Highland Park. And again, the community rallied behind these, the, these Jewish residents. But that's something that is very fresh and was specifically targeted at these individuals because they are members of the Jewish community. And then uh, we have here a picture of the assailant in the tree of life. This is a picture that is spread throughout a lot of white supremacy networks. Screw your optics is what the assailant said right before he went in and murdered 11 people at the Tree of Life building. And his picture is, is spread just like this throughout many white supremacy networks and social chat, room, or, uh, in, uh, chat rooms. The bottom right is what just happened on New Year's Eve. This is a direct threat an individual made against a synagogue in um, Los Angeles. And you can read what he says. I'm finally gonna act upon my desires to kill all Jews. And he lists the synagogue and above it is where he had some other places in mind. So again, just sharing with you what, I, when I talk about the threat tempo in the Jewish community, what this really looks like. Some of this happened obviously here in Pittsburgh and then I use the LA reference. That was our most recent uh, thwarted attack that we've contended with here in the, uh, in the Jewish community at large. And then the, the next picture I just wanna share with you, I, I know I referenced this when I spoke about it, 
This is based on last year's data. And again, the FBI puts this report together every single year. These are statistics from the 2020 report that shows um, that here's the religious, um, religious threats, 13% of all threats. And so the amount of threats were over 8,000. 13% of them are directed at the religious community. Of that 13%, if you break that, that piece of that pie out, 60% are directed towards the, uh, towards the Jewish community. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, of, of a visual of what we're seeing. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing that and go back to uh, just a few more comments that I'd like to make. So again, from a security lens, what are we seeing? We're seeing angry socially disconnected people who feel they've been wronged. We've seen online comments and hate speech that amplify ideology. The photos on the screen show false narratives and narrative toxicity that unfortunately people buy into. We know that mental health issues and conspiracy theories are a caustic mix. We know that threats are not fitting into neat boxes but we do see them directed at the Jewish community, although it is very difficult to, to predefine these threats. And one thing we really have to focus on is folks who are started down the pathway of violence. It starts with ideology, it starts with behavior. And so much of the work we do is try and intercept people before they go down that pathway of violence. And we have seen violent crime on the rise. We've seen anti-Semitism on the rise. We need to understand these violent acts to prevent them, planning, preparing, defending ourselves. So that being said, let me bring it back to the Nazi flag. The flag is a hate symbol and hate symbols may serve as motivation or a call to action to those who believe in these abhorrent ideologies. They can serve as a call to violence, a call to mobilize, a call to the new term is acceleration, accelerationism, making forward movement based on your ideology. And typically that is a, a, a movement of violence, a call to discrimination. Those motivated by prejudice spread hate to others, predisposed with similar ideology. It catches fire. Discrimination, discrimination or bias based on race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, and those with disabilities on any grounds is not okay. And hate against one is a hate against all. But hate crimes, anti-Semitic crimes, hate crimes directed as, against the Jewish community is typically a good barometer for hate crimes directed against these other groups. We have seen that, and I can tell you that firsthand from my role as, as supervisor of the um, civil rights squad. So all of this being said to say, this is why we need to be engaged from a security perspective. We need to commit to action. We need to look out for one another. We need to stand together in equity. So I thank you so much for joining me and uh, sharing in this effort this evening.